Uh, good morning, uh, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Tim Huxley, Executive Director of the Asia Office of the International Institute for Strategic Studies, located here in Singapore. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to the 25th IISS Fullerton Lecture, the venue today being the charming Straits Rooms uh, in the historic Fullerton Hotel, one of uh, Singapore's listed buildings of distinction. It's wonderful to see such a large and uh, diverse audience here uh, this morning. Since the Fullerton Lecture Series was established in 2012, its purpose has been consistent to stimulate discussion in the wide Singapore community on issues of international significance, be these strategic, political, or economic in nature. Uh, this morning, I'm delighted that we have with us, as the 25th IISS Fullerton Lecturer, His Excellency Ambassador Li Luang Min, uh, Secretary General of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, as we usually call it. Ambassador Lee has been Secretary General of ASEAN since early 2013. Before assuming this important post, he had a long and notably very distinguished career in Vietnam's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He was Vietnam's Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs from 2011 to 2013. Uh, and before that, from 2004 to 2011, he was Vietnam's permanent representative to the United Nations. He was thus superbly well qualified to take on his present role with what is usually recognized as the most important regional association in the developing world and one that has become something of a model for groupings in other regions. The title of the Secretary General's Fullerton Lecture aptly sums up ASEAN's current predicament. It is clear that, as a result of last year's declaration of the ASEAN community, the grouping has a vision, and it's a vision which is comprehensive and detailed. Opportunities are clearly there for closer collaboration among the states and peoples and businesses of Southeast Asia. Indeed, Many people would argue that such cooperation is vital for the countries of the region if they are to continue succeeding. But in translating the vision for ASEAN's future into reality, the association clearly faces some very significant challenges. Not least of these challenges is a regional security environment that many assess to be deteriorating. No one could speak more authoritatively on the subject of the opportunities and challenges facing ASEAN, so we all look forward eagerly to your address, Secretary General. The floor is yours. Uh, good morning, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. First, let me thank the International Institute for International Studies, Asia and Group Singapore, for the invitation for me to address you at this very important Fullerton Lecture Series on ASEAN. As we are opening a new chapter in the history of the association with the launch of the ASEAN community at the end of last year, which not only demonstrate ASEAN resilience and dynamism throughout the journey of nearly half a century, but also signal to the world how far and how well the member state of the association have achieved and how well and how far we may be able to go. A coming together and by the spirit of the fundamental principle of international relations that ASEAN's implementation has exemplified and strived. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, when the Bangkok Declaration, later known as the ASEAN Declaration, was uh, signed on 8 August 1967 to establish an association for regional cooperation among the countries of Southeast Asia, many doubted that the new association of Southeast Asian nations, which was born in the context of the Cold War, with tension 
then between the then NASEAN and the rest of Southeast Asia, and with the lack of trust and confidence even between the members of the then ASEAN, would survive its infancy. And ASEAN did survive. ASEAN grew and ASEAN matured. And after 32 years with the emission of the last Southeast Asian country into the association, uh, the, in 1999, it uh, fulfilled the vision of a, yeah, the fathers of, the, of ASEAN to unite all nations of Southeast Asia under one roof, establishing ASEAN's role as a collective enterprise for managing regional challenges and opportunities. Overcoming the challenges in the course of its evolution over the past 49 years. Throughout a decade-long process of community building, ASEAN has fundamentally shaped the regional agenda and had strived against all odds to become one of the most successful experiments in regional integration and cooperation. At the heart of this claim is ASEAN's role in moderating into regional conflicts and significantly reducing the likelihood of confrontation. Amid political instabilities and security threat elsewhere in the world, in other regions, ASEAN's significant contribution in maintaining peace and promoting harmony in Southeast Asia has been its outstanding achievement. Recognizing the organic relationship between stability and prosperity, ASEAN sustained regional peace by integrating harmonious interstate relations through political instruments, such as the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in Southeast Asia, the Treaty on Southeast Asia Nuclear Open Free Zone, and the Declaration on the Conduct of Parties in the South China Sea all based on equality, the recognition of common problems, the need to maintain and strengthen partnership for the attainment and protection of mutual interests, and maintain stability from external interference, which would enable ASEAN member countries to preserve their national identities, and crystallizing all those fundamental principles the ASEAN Charter, adopted in December 2008, which created for ASEAN a solid legal foundation to contribute to the resolution of uh, regional issues, is just a strong reflection of ASEAN unity in diversity. Faithful to the principle of consultation and peaceful resolution of differences, of non-interference in each other's internal affairs, respect for each other's independence and sovereignty, ASEAN has created an environment for peace, stability, and strengthened confidence among the 10 members of the association with different political systems in striving together for the shared goals. The establishment of uh, and the promotion of work of mechanisms such as the ASEAN Regional Forum, the ASEAN Defense Minister's Meeting Plus, and the East Asia Summit has instilled ASEAN's central role in the dialogue and consultations on resolution of not only ASEAN-related issues, but, not, but also those of the wider Asia-Pacific region, those political and security issues. Economically, with the current combined GDP of 2.6 trillion US dollars in 2015, collectively, ASEAN has become the third largest economy in Asia and the seventh largest in the world. And it has been projected that we will become the fourth largest in the world by 2050. With a combined population of uh, 625 million, ASEAN is also the third largest market in the world behind only China and India. The significance of the ASEAN economic community 
and its potential to fundamentally shape the region's present and future economic architecture are just evident. Anchored on key ec uh, economic agreements, the reform economic fundamentals of ASEAN member states have enabled them to become more resilient and more forward-looking in dealing with you know, economic downturns. The growth opportunities in ASEAN are just vast and wide-ranging. With enhanced and more connected infrastructure, ASEAN has embedded itself in key regional and global value chains, driving more trade and business investment across the region and bringing about unprecedented development and prosperity to the ASEAN member states. The single market and production base fostered by the ASEAN economic community building efforts provides a base for output expansion with new growth drivers anchored on the high value activities while seeking business opportunities in new cross-border markets. A significant progress has also been made in the opening up of market through tariff elimination, to trade facilitation, to standard harmonization, and mutual recognition arrangement coherence. With ASEAN being the only economic entity having free trade agreements with all major FTA partners, Japan, India, China, Republic of Korea, Australia, New Zealand, uh, and in the process of negotiating an agreement which would create the biggest ever single market in the world, occupying up to half of the world population and one third of the world GDP and one third of the world I mean, the market uh, trade, I mean the RCEP. Numerous business surveys and have shown sustained commercial confidence and expansion in our region. While the initiative for ASEAN integration uh, remains the cornerstone of the effort to narrow the gap of development and accelerate economic integration of the new members of ASEAN, namely Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam, its implementation has achieved substantial progress, increasing the proportion of their combined GDP in that of the whole of ASEAN from less than 6% in 2009 to approximately to 12% currently. You may recall that uh, by 1990 when you know, the new members were not even there. They occupied only less than 3% of the then, I mean the combined GDP of the then ASEAN. And this contributes to the attainment of ASEAN's objective of economic, uh, equitable and sustainable development. With ASEAN's strategic geopolitical position fortified by the success of its integration and community building process and its forward-looking vision, ASEAN's standing in the international arena has been much further elevated. By now, more than 90 non-ASEAN countries have uh, appointed ambassadors to ASEAN and 22 non-ASEAN countries have acceded to the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in South Asia, now governing not only relations among the ASEAN countries, but also among ASEAN countries and those non-ASEAN countries. And ASEAN has become the only among the more than 50 regional organizations in the world having established partnership and uh, actually uh, uh, by now, all strategic partnership with all the main, the major powers of the world, which all publicly supported ASEAN totality and the central role of ASEAN in the regional mechanisms. Ladies and gentlemen, the launch of the ASEAN community has provided a firm platform for ASEAN to deepen, broaden, 
can accelerate the trajectory of regional integration process. Lao and Yasen, with its forward-looking approach to take on a more proactive leadership role in further shaping the regional architecture to best serve the interests of the people of the region as a whole, and thereby realizing the vision of a dynamic, inclusive, connected, people-oriented, people-centered ASEAN community to a sustainable and equitable development that benefits all the peoples of the uh, community. Post 2015, the ASEAN will take up a bold and forward-looking vision, building on the achievement and early gains of the 2015 blueprints, while also being responsive to emerging developments, new, body, uh, new opportunities, and new challenges. The new Post-2015 vision for ASEAN, known as ASEAN Vision 2025, envisions a highly cohesive and integrated, competitive, innovative, dynamic, resilient, people-oriented, people-centered community that is also globally active and relevant. And moving forward, as ASEAN further consolidates on its community building process, critical challenges also must be addressed. With the establishment of the ASEAN community, ASEAN standing in the internet community has been rightly assessed from the context of centrality in all its internal and external dimensions. Through ASEAN community building efforts, ASEAN has not only solidified the bond within the ASEAN member state, but also expanded the region through it, through its engagement and integration beyond the region. As it is gaining more and more relevance and prominence, ASEAN is all more seen and expected to continue to play a central role in the regional architecture. And founded on the ASEAN Charter documents and key legal documents and framework and guided by the ASEAN Community Roadmap, respective blueprints, and the sectoral work plans. The ASEAN institutions have received programs, projects, and processes to pursue the integration goals in the three communities, three pillars of the community, political security, economic, and social cultural. Taken all together, the whole breadth of the community building process has placed ASEAN at the center position with strong fundamental in place for ASEAN to move forward in a more firm and assured footing, ready to take on a more ambitious far reaching agenda. The situation in the region at the time of ASEAN founding has changed radically. ASEAN is facing all together a different set of overwhelming challenges, while intra ASEAN inter regional tension and potential for conflict has been basically removed, and ASEAN is experiencing relative peace and stability. There continue to be external pressures that bear on the region, that bear on the community. An increasingly complex geopolitical landscape Complicated by, the, complicated by the competing interests in the world order among the big powers can have destabilizing effect and create a deficit of strategic trust and confidence in the region. ASEAN would have to contend with resistant flashpoints that have drawn serious concerns and regional peace and security, extremism, armed conflict, and political tensions elsewhere in the world, often with enormous material costs and social cultural damage, have potential significant ramifications globally and also for our own region. ASEAN must be able to continue to be at the very core of all ASEAN initiatives and endeavors reinforce its unity 
cohesiveness and relevance in all aspects of digital cooperation. ASEAN must be able to project common positions on critical international issues and influence global discourse. The durability and religion of ASEAN-led norms and mechanisms shouldn't be by voter in this connection. And to achieve this, ASEAN must continue to strengthen and uphold our centrality. And in this connection, the South China Sea issue is a key test that ASEAN must overcome. It is important that ASEAN united on our six-point principle, get China engaged to ensure effective and full implementation of the declaration on the conduct of parties in South China Sea, and accelerate substantive negotiations on the terms of a legally binding code of conduct, which must be in accordance with the national law and the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea of the UNCLOS. That could effectively prevent and manage at sea, I mean, incidents, leveling the gap between the official diplomacy between the political commitments and the real situation. And this would restore trust and confidence among parties, and thus helping us maintain the much needed peace and stability for the region in the most critical periods for community consolidation. And to allow ASEAN to compete more successfully economically in the global stage, Strengthening a rule-based regime is imperative. The enhancement of ASEAN single market and reduction base requires competitive regulatory framework and the relevant infrastructure in place. Further efforts at the national level in harmonizing national law regulations and aligning the national strategies and work plans with regional agreement and commitments are required to bring the regulatory framework to full implementation. As a most disaster prone region with the frequency and severity of natural disasters, you may be aware that you know, ASEAN I mean, region has been said to be one of the most four or five regions most prone to natural disasters. If uh, you can recall over the past decade alone, what have happened in ASEAN. It's tsunami, it's earthquake, it's, I mean, typhoon, and at the same time, drought and floods. And now, a lot of ASEAN countries, especially the North ASEAN countries, are experiencing the most serious impact of the and you know, millions of people are affected. So as the most disaster-prone region and with the frequency and severity of natural disasters, ASEAN must be ready to mitigate and address more effectively the impact and those of the new normal in climate change. Globalization is no longer just economic, and ASEAN must prepare to ensure effective implementation of the one ASEAN, one response strategy, which allows ASEAN to respond to disasters, not only in ASEAN, but also out of the region, not only among ASEAN countries, but what you know, cooperation, coordination with, you know, partners of ASEAN. And ASEAN has made significant progress in all socioeconomic indicators, while inherent diversities and varying development levels are seen as major obstacles. ASEAN capitalized on the notion of unity in diversity, highlighting instead the interdependence of its collective inspiration which is to enhance the well-being and standard living of all the peoples of ASEAN, which is manifested in twenty sectoral areas of social cultural cooperation. In the past two decades, ASEAN has transformed itself by reducing the number and share of people suffering from extreme poverty from one in two to one in eight persons. To achieve its goal to be a people-oriented, people-centered community, thereby ensuring that ASEAN benefit all the peoples, continuous efforts are required to 
gender, equitable development, and inclusive growth. While continuing to improve the business environment to retain and attract more multinational companies to invest and to do business in the region, supporting the micro, small, and medium enterprises, which uh, occupy up to 90% of the business in ASEAN and employ up to more than 90% of ASEAN workforce. The main critical for ASEAN to enable greater contribution to economic growth, employment, and enterprise development. Adequate resources are needed to implement country-specific and regional measures. Financing ASEAN's wide-range initiative for people-to-people -people connectivity, education, health, disaster management, culture, environment, social welfare, and labor, among others, shall remain top priority in the process of implementing the new vision. And while ASEAN member states, together with dialogue partners and external parties, have contributed significantly, ASEAN should continue to find new and innovative ways to provide its initiative through funds, technical expertise, and knowledge assets. Private sector and philanthropic support should also be tapped for the implementation of these people-oriented people-centered initiative. In a region as uh, multifarious as South Asia, it is through the collective will and strong commitment from all ASEAN member countries that ASEAN has come into its full fruition as a political cohesive, economic integrated, economically integrated, and socially responsible community today. In a community that comprises 10 diverse member states with different levels of development, resource, endowment, political and economic structures, the initiative for us and integration remain the cornerstone of this effort with the objective of narrowing the gap of development and accelerating economic integration in the new member countries of the association. The successor uh, work Plan 3 under this initiative, which has been developed taking into account the ASEAN 2015 vision, must be conducive to ensuring equitable and sustainable development. And also in promoting implementation of this initiative, our dialogue partners and external parties have been key actors in delivering technical assistance and capacity building support for the similarities in the challenges that we all face in the region. Other ASEAN member state contributions that can be more practical in addressing common challenges in meeting regional commitments, and they should be also enhanced. With the root diversity of countries among the member states, building an ASEAN identity can be also a unique challenge the advancement of communication technology, more effective outreach efforts, and better people-to-people -people connectivity through travel, education, cultural exchange, and skill mobility have all to be enhanced towards a stronger and unique sense of ASEAN identity. which is built upon its uh, shared vision of peace and uh, prosperity. Public awareness uh, engagement must be promoted to foster greater support and participation by the peoples who ultimately have to be the ones sharing the opportunities and the benefits of a prosperous community that we claim to be people-oriented and people-centered. The ambitious ASEAN Vision 2025, forging ahead together, entails a heavy workload, including the completion of unfinished measures in 2015 blueprints, hundreds of them. And uh, in an increasingly challenging environment, 
and measures for strengthening the ASEAN Secretariat and reviewing the ASEAN organ processes with a view to making them more effective must be continued to, un to be undertaken by the relevant ASEAN bodies and the ASEAN member countries uh, with, I mean, additional responsibilities and burdens, including financial burden that must be ready to undertake. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenges of ASEAN that ASEAN is facing is uh, in our continued process of uh, community consolidation and integration, but just as great as our ambition reflected in our born and forward-looking vision. Many did not believe ASEAN would survive when it was established in 1967, and ASEAN survived, we grew, and we matured. And when ASEAN decided to push forward the deadline for the establishment of community from 2020 to 2015, and along the process of implementation, many additional measures were brought to the blueprints. Also, many did not believe we would succeed. ASEAN did succeed, and we accomplished even more than the original plan. You may be aware that you know the original economic community blueprint contained more than just more than 300 measures. We ended up you know more than 600. The RCP was not there, and a lot of measures in the area of uh, more sensitive uh, sectors were not there and we accomplished up to more than 500 measures by the time the community was uh, established. The challenges wouldn't be there for us to face should we not want to move forward. And the benefits of those 49 years of integration and community building allowed the peoples of ASEAN to positive, I mean to have positive answer to the very, very often asked question, what if there were no ASEAN? And I hope that, and I am uh, confident that the outcome of discussions, of discussions like this today, would uh, promote the confidence that we all in ASEAN have in the future of the community. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Secretary General, for, for um, your, your excellent uh, Fullerton lecture, which was um, uh, both comprehensive and uh, il illuminating. Um, you talked in quite a lot of detail um, about both the, the opportunities uh, and, and the, the challenges that, that ASEAN um, confronts, and I'm, I'm sure that there are many in our, our audience who will have some uh, questions for you. But uh, in, in order to uh, begin the discussion, I, I hope you won't mind if I ask you one or two questions of, of my own, uh, which occurred to me while, while you were speaking. Um, one, is, one is about uh, the economic side of ASEAN, and, and, and one is about the political and security side. So uh, my, my first question uh, is about the ASEAN economic community. Uh, as you you said in your, your lecture, um, with a population of 625 million across Southeast Asia, um, ASEAN constitutes the third uh, largest uh, market in the, the world after China and India. There's clearly a massive uh, opportunity there. Um, uh, and I think it, it's fair to say that the, the rhetoric of the ASEAN economic community suggests that there is a, um, a strong commitment to more far-reaching economic cooperation amongst Southeast Asia's uh, countries and uh, businesses and people. But, but the reality is sometimes seems to be a little bit of a contrast in that, um, for example, there are still um, many non-tariff barriers uh, to trade and uh, 
the, the actual commitments to liberalizing the service and investment sectors um, still, still seem to be um, rather uh, un underwhelming. Um, and so in terms of the practical efforts to bring about uh, a really substantial and deep ASEAN economic co community, sometimes it seems that there's rather a lack of depth in the, in the practical efforts that are, that are being made. And I just wonder, is, is, that, is that a fair assessment? Um, and, and if so, uh, what could be done to strengthen the, 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 the substantive commitments to the ASEAN economic community? Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, out of the desire to accelerate the process of integration and uh, community building, the leaders of ASEAN in the recognition of the, the new situation with globalization, of interdependence, and the new normal in the economic you know, uh, situation, the global economic situation, they decided to I mean, to push forward the deadline for the establishment of the community. And of course, I mean, that includes the uh, AEC, the mm -hmm. economic community from 2020 to 2015. So, uh, uh, by the time we, uh, I mean, the community was launched last uh, this, uh, the, uh, November. If we compare what we had in the blueprint, the more than 600 measures, and what we accomplished, uh, 465 something, out of the 510 prioritized measures, and you know, you compared with you know the more than 600 measures in the I mean the latest I mean, blueprint then uh, we, we, we would say that we had you know, not you know, uh, succeeded. We had not achieved you know, the, the goals mm. of, you know, mm. the, the, I mean, of the AEC. But if uh, we look at what we, 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 we have created through this process of uh, integration and community building, look at what we have achieved you know, in the um, main major pillars of that AEC taxation, I mean, trade investment facilitation. By the time the AC was established, up to 96, 97% of the own tariff line, I mean, uh, among the ASEAN countries, inter-ASEAN, I mean, the tariff, I mean, had been eliminated. And uh, as a schedule by 2018, all the tariff line in ASEAN would have to be, I mean, eliminated. As you know, I mean, the, the four, new members of the association were allowed to maintain uh, some special line until 2018. So uh, goods uh, now can move not yet completely freely, but more freely, I mean, among the uh, Kachin, uh, ASEAN countries. And of course, that uh, contribute to the motion of uh, trade and uh, investment. As a result, I mean, uh, now, Still, it's uh, still very modest, but the uh, inter-ASEAN trade has been increased to uh, approximately 25 percent from less than 20. I mean, by 2009, before we started the process of implementation of the blueprint. In the area of uh, services, I mean, uh, up to 100 uh, subsectors have been subjected to liberalisation. In the area of uh, labor uh, mobility, we have concluded uh, eight mutual recognition uh, uh, agreements under which uh, professional, I mean, can move freely among the ASEAN countries looking for jobs. And we have uh, set up a uh, registry where we have had up to more than 2,000 professionals in ASEAN, I mean, have been registered, very, 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 uh, very registered for, I mean, the, uh, the opportunity to look for jobs in uh, the ASEAN countries. In terms of uh, integration, as I mentioned, you know, ASEAN is the only uh, economic entity having concluded uh, EFTAs with all the major partners of ASEAN, uh, China, I mean, Japan, Korea, Australia, India, and New Zealand. And uh, ASEAN is the only, I mean, economic uh, entity negotiating the biggest, I mean, the economic uh, partnership established would be, you know, the biggest single market in the world. 
comprising all ASEAN countries and in those six EFT partners of ASEAN. And uh, we are also negotiating with Hong Kong a separate, I mean, the ASEAN Hong Kong FDA. We have agreed to resume the negotiation with the EU on the ASEAN EU FDA. And of course, we have got a lot of requests also for such, I mean, the partnership. Uh, we wouldn't be able to engage in all this, not for the, I mean, the, 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 the AEC that we have established, not for the development of, you know, the, uh, the, 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 uh, of, of the, the development of the process of integration that we have undertaken for part, uh, I would say, um, two decades. Mm, thank you very much. So maybe, maybe I was being rather, rather unfair in my assessment mm -hmm. of, uh, of the uh, ASEAN Economic Community's progress. My, my, my second question is about ASEAN and the South China Sea. Uh, I think we're, we're all aware of uh, what's been happening in the South China Sea uh, over the last two years um, in terms of the extensive island building and militarization programs that we've seen uh, advancing quite rapidly there. Um, uh, but it, it's, it, it's, I think it seems, it seems clear that um, China, which is responsible for, for most of that island building and, and militarization, does take seriously um, ASEAN. And I think that my, my impression is that there is concern on the Chinese side when, when ASEAN pushes back uh, as a bloc. Um, otherwise, uh, we would not have seen China making the efforts that we've seen in the last few weeks and months to, to play up different positions uh, among members of, of ASEAN. And I think that, that's because uh, uh, ASEAN's resistance does, does worry China. Um, so my, my question is, can we expect to see uh, ASEAN play a stronger role in defending the interests of its members in the South China Sea and um, we're expecting a, a judgment within the next probably within the next two months uh, from the permanent court of arbitration on the, the Philippine uh, case uh, are, are we likely to see um, an ASEAN statement in response to that judgment when it comes on the first part of your question, I would say uh, yes and no. Yes, because we have got you know, China's commitment to uh, engage more actively with ASEAN in this connection on this uh, I mean, the issue in the negotiation of you know, a code of conduct. Mm. Commitment to uh, start a new phase of consultations in which we would you know, uh, I mean, uh, discuss, negotiate, all, I mean, the elements, potential, I mean, elements of a COC. And uh, we have agreed to intensify, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the process of consultations at senior official, I mean, the, uh, level. And, um, I mean, the, actually, I mean, the more rounds of consultations as, as such have been uh, organized. So politically, I mean, the political commit commitments are there. Former commitments are there. Diplomatic and the commitments are there. So I say yes, there has been progress. No, because uh, we still see a, a big gap between those diplomatic commitments, those uh, political commitments, and those, I mean, the, uh, formal commitments uh, with the uh, real situation on the ground at sea, where we have seen intensification of activities, which go counter to the very spirit and the provisions of the uh, uh, declaration on the conduct of the uh, part in South China Sea that uh, ASEAN and China signed back in 2002, uh, 14 years ago. And uh, the construction of artificial islands, expansion of the already illegally I mean, the occupied, I mean, the features and islands, 
and the uh, setting up of military, uh, I mean, facilities, which can be, I mean, uh, taken as, I mean, militarization of, you know, those uh, occupied islands in Peters, which, again, I mean, all go counter to the spirit and uh, provisions of the DOC. And that would uh, even, you know, further complicate the process of uh, negotiating a, a, a COC. So, uh, I mean, yes and no. And uh, if ASEAN will be, I mean, uh, able to, uh, I mean, uh, achieve the objective of uh, early conclusion of, you know, the uh, COC, I mean, I mentioned the need for ASEAN to maintain the uh, Centrality, mm. our central role in you know in the, not only, I mean the uh, dealing with interaction issues, but also in the dealing with the last point, uh, affecting the peace and stability of our region, and of course the South issue is one among them. Uh, if we look at uh, what happened at a time when we failed to even to issue a joint communique on the result of you know, uh, of, you know one of the most important uh, meetings of ASEAN. And what we were able to, I mean, to agree on, uh, then I can say that uh, we can be optimistic. We can be confident in ASEAN ability mm -hmm. to uh, move forward together yes. to maintain our sentinality and to, I mean, uh, I mean to strengthen our central role in uh, dealing with, you know, those uh, issues in the, I mean, the, in those uh, regional mechanism that uh, ASEAN, I mean, uh, are leading and uh, ASEAN has uh, initiated. Thank you very much uh, for, for uh, answering those uh, questions of mine in, in such a, a, a detailed and careful way, Secretary General. Um, oh, but the, uh, uh, the, the last part of your yes. question on the... Uh, uh, PCA. Or yeah. the PCA. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, we have not discussed this yet. I mean, the scheduled meeting of the ASEAN for the ministers is for August. Yes. And we don't know even, you know, when, you know, mm. the, the, the verdict of, you know, the, the, the court will come out. Uh, but uh, let me say this. If, you know, uh, all ASEAN countries, if not all ASEAN countries would be able to, uh, I mean, uh, to support any joint statement, I, I see no reason why any, any country, any ASEAN country, would oppose to the idea of, you know, a looking for a peaceful mm. solution of a dispute. What is one option of the main, you know, a, a provision, I mean, of the TAC that governs inter-state relations, those among ASEAN countries and those among the ASEAN countries and, uh, I mean, the other TAC, I mean, the parties. And uh, any uh, measure, I mean, any uh, legal measure can, cannot be considered otherwise, I mean, as I mean, the, the non-peaceful mm. measure. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much. Um, we now have time for a few uh, questions from our, our audience. If you'd like to ask a question, just raise your hand, and when I recognize you, uh, the microphone will come to you, then if you could please say um, who you are and uh, what your uh, affiliation is, if any. Um, sir, in the middle on the, on the left here. Thank you. Um, Ambassador Lee. Uh, could you say who oh, sorry, you? I'm sorry. Uh, Ian Chong, uh, National University of Singapore. Um, so Ambassador Lee, I'm quite curious about your the, the emphasis that you've placed on ASEAN unity, because I think in 
recent weeks, we've seen reports that China seemed to be peeling off uh, ASEAN members, being de divisive within the region, uh, particularly after Wang Yi's visit to uh, Brunei, Cambodia, and Laos. Uh, and of course, at the same time, we see uh, Vietnam, the Philippines, and arguably Singapore moving closer to Australia, Japan, um, the United States. Uh, so there's potentially can be an argument made about uh, perhaps a fraying of ASEAN unity. Um, so I'd like I'd like you to um, speak on that in particular, you know, whether you think that that is uh, actually the case, and if so, uh, what you think ASEAN, uh, and more specifically the Secretariat, which you're in charge of, uh, can do about this situation. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, first, we are not, you know, even, uh, I mean, aware of what, you know, was agreed, I mean, between China and those uh, three ASEAN countries mentioned. Cambodia has come out and said, no, we did not have any agreement with China, there were just a visit by the Chinese Foreign Minister, and there was no discussion, there was no agreement. We have heard nothing from, you know, uh, other countries, you know, Laos or, I mean, the Brunei, mm. on the, what uh, was agreed, on what happened, and we have not uh, heard anything from China on those, I mean, the recantation or those, I mean, the kind of, you know, statement from those uh, countries concerned. But uh, what we know was that, I mean, the, um, I mean the, let, let, let me say this, you know, we have to be able to distinct the two aspects of the uh, South China Sea issue, one of uh, settling sovereignty claims. And there, I mean, the ASEAN countries, even ASEAN countries, do not have to, I mean, have one common position. Because you know the, those soft claims have to be resolved among the parties concerned. The, the difference between the ASEAN position and uh, the uh, Chinese position is that when we we we, we, talk, we talk about uh, the parties concerned, we mean those parties concerned maybe two parties, maybe three parties, maybe four parties, or more parties, depending on the specific uh, dispute. There are dispute concerning only, I mean, the China and uh, Vietnam, for example, I mean, in the year of, you know, the uh, Tonkin Gulf area. There are disputes, I mean, concerning not only uh, Vietnam and China, but also concern the Philippines, and there are other disputes which may concern also not only China and Vietnam, Philippines, also Malaysia and Brunei. So one ASEAN country, I mean, they cannot uh, negotiate would you know any other country with China on I mean the shoulder of any other I mean fellow ASEAN countries not only for the the, the, the need to I mean the, to maintain solidarity but for the fact that you know any agreement forced between only two parties concerned would not I mean resolve problems concerning more than I mean uh, those two parties concerned so that's the, the, the difference, you know, in the, the Chinese view and the ASEAN view. But on the second aspect of, you know, uh, the issue, that of maintaining peace and stability, that of maintaining and ensuring the uh, safety of navigation, that of maintaining uh, maritime security, then uh, we are all, ASEAN and China, we are all, all governed by the DOC. That ASEAN and China signed back in 2002. And if, I mean, uh, uh, actually, if, you know, the DOC, I mean, that, uh, I mean, the uh, uh, declaration signed between ASEAN and China being in 2002 had been fully and effectively implemented with the own fundamental principle there, international law, the United Nations, uh, I mean, the Convention on the Law of the Sea of 1982, uh, self-restraint, peaceful solution of dispute, uh, non, I mean, the, I mean the, the, uh, not engaging in activities, changing the status quo, and even, you know, the early conclusion of, you know, a, a COC that they are owned there. So if the DOC had been fully and effectively, I mean, in, implemented, it wouldn't be an indeed for, uh, for a new instrument for, for a COC. The fact that we need a, a COC I mean, a new instrument would, would be, you know, one legally, I mean, I mean the binding uh, doc document 
for the fact, it is for the fact that the DOC had not been effectively and fully implemented, and which led to the, I mean the, I mean the situation, but what all uh, have happened, what all I mean, happening on the ground. And there, I mean, of course, you know, ASEAN has only one common position, reflected in its uh, six-point principle that we adopted back in 2012. Thank you very much. Uh, at, at, the, at the back, in the middle at the back, sir. Hi, I'm, I'm Aaron Wong from KPMG. Um, ASEAN has recently ratified the uh, unlimited flights for the, um, for the Free Skies Pact among all ASEAN countries uh, internally. So what I'm wondering is about, would it be too ambitious to envisage true freedom of passage like a European Union concept among all transportation methods in ASEAN, for example, through the roads and rail and etc. Thank you. First, you know, uh, just say, I mean, the, what we have, uh, I mean, the learned from, I mean, the, very often people compare what we have in our hand, what we are going through in our hand, what we are building in our hand, and what has, I mean, the, been the experience of the European Union. I mean, the, we are not going to be a super national, I mean, the, I mean the entity. We're not going to be, you know, a super national, I mean, the, I mean, union. ASEAN will remain an intergovernmental, uh, I mean, the intergovernmental organization. Uh, it's not that we, I mean, the, we will never be there. It's not now the intention of uh, of ASEAN to to move there. We have learned a lot from the EU experience not only in uh, what to do and in the what not to do. I mean, given our specific uh, conditions, our uh, specific uh, situation. Let's say in ASEAN, what we have? You know, we have still a great, I mean, the gap of development among the member states. We have a uh, Singapore whose uh, per capita income is uh, 700 times more than that of uh, Myanmar or Cambodia. We have uh, Indonesia, whose uh, population is uh, 50, I mean, uh, times bigger than that of, uh, I mean, uh, Brunei, Jerusalem. And we have uh, different political system in the member states. The ASEAN is considered as one of the most diverse, I mean, uh, regions in the world, not only in, I mean, in the, those that I mentioned in the political system, you know, in the, but you know, we totally say, I mean, in, in traffic, we are even in, in traffic, we are diversified. So uh, we have learned a lot, we can learn a lot also from EU experience. Uh, but, you know, the, 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 the process of uh, integration in ASEAN is uh, different. Uh, uh, and uh, in, in this specific, you know, area of uh, aviation integration also, we have learned a lot of uh, experience from the uh, EU in terms of, uh, I mean, recognizing the importance of uh, connectivity. And actually, that's, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, it is one of, you know, the uh, high priorities on the uh, ASEAN EU, I mean, the, Agenda of cooperation, but uh, the, the 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 agreement, the open sky policy that we have in the, in ASEAN, it's not exactly the same what they have in the EU. But uh, if you go to any ASEAN country now, what you see, either it's construction of a new terminals, mm -hmm. it's expansion of the existing terminals, mm -hmm. of uh, its uh, renovation of a new, uh, I mean the terminals. Even in the, a, a small country like, I mean, the Brunei, mm. or uh, of course, I mean, the, more so in uh, Singapore, in Indonesia, in Vietnam, Malaysia. So uh, with this, you know, uh, the, the last country in ASEAN having ratified the Open Sky uh, Agreement, we see, I mean, uh, a lot of opportunities, not only for inter-ASEAN cooperation, 
but also for that between ASEAN and you know our partner countries, and it's an important, uh, I mean, area of uh, uh, cooperation and integration. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm very struck by, your, by what you said about the, the comparison with the EU, that ASEAN has, has learned in some cases what to do, but also what not to do, which I think is very significant. Um, uh, we have time for one, one more question. Yes, madam, here. My name is Supriya Sen, and I work with McKinsey as a senior advisor. Um, thank you for your illuminating talk. I work in the area of sustainability, and I would think that in ASEAN, you can make the very diversity as a strength. If you look at an area which and affects us all, which is the environment, and um, even more specifically, oceans sustainability as the mother of all life. And here on one hand, you have overfishing. We cannot have even an agreement where there is a, a common understanding of how to allow the uh, regeneration of the fish in the uh, oceans surrounding us. My question is, can ASEAN take leadership in some issue such as this, which leads not only to greater awareness, but actually passes through into acceptance and then, let's say, actually implementation or uh, so on. Now, I only raise this on oceans because of the larger point that you made on China, India, uh, and the, uh, coming sooner than later, you can have the whole world in a trade pact. <laughs> but basically, we have to fructify around specific issues. Where's ASEAN's position on this? Thank you very much. Actually, the question is about, I mean, uh, let me say, I mean, uh, one of, I mean, two of the central elements in the ASEAN Boot 2015 vision. Number one is, I mean, to ensure balanced, equitable, and sustained progress on all the civilians of the community. And second is, I mean, making ASEAN more a regional and global player. ASEAN engaging more at the global level. And that's the, 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 the reason why, I mean, in the process of uh, developing our new vision, we have uh, tried to align our priorities to the uh, new global, I mean, uh, agenda, I mean, global, I mean, uh, certain relevant uh, agenda, 2030, adopted by the United Nations. Uh, so, uh, uh, sustainability. Of course, I mean, there is the objective that we set to achieve, and uh, that through the effort to ensure that the community that uh, we are striving to uh, strengthen would be one, people-oriented, people-centered, where, I mean, the principle of consultation and uh, participation of all stakeholders in the uh, ASEAN affairs. I mean, uh, is uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, paramount. Secretary General, I'm afraid that we've uh, we've run out of time, and we uh, need uh, very soon to bring the session to an end. But I'd like to thank you for your answers to those questions for engaging with me in conversation and, uh, and, and more than anything, thank you again for your really, really excellent uh, Fullerton lecture, the 25th in the series, so it's quite a big, big event for, for us. Um, we're very grateful to you for, for making time in what I know is a very busy schedule during a short visit to Singapore to come to speak to us this morning. So uh, all, all our thanks for uh, everything you've done for us this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.